The trade winds from China have blessed us all today, my friends. It's the return of the clouds that have been forged from the fires of AC Infinity's engineering and drafting department. The Gen 2 cloud forges have finally arrived. So what does that mean? We could finally do this breakdown for you guys by popular request. We're going to show you the differences of what we found in the Gen 1s versus the Gen 2s. And be sure to watch till the end because we got some real good stuff to give you here. If you have a humidifier, a cloud forge like this, and it's got the dead display, we're going to show you a simple trick to just make these things come right back to life. I promise you it works. We'll see you in a minute. All right, so we're back guys. We're about to start the video breakdown between the Gen 1, Gen 2. But before we start, I just want to put it out there. If anybody, anyone who sees this video, if you guys know or you shop at a local grow store where you like the people you work with, please take the time to share this video and show them what we're gonna break down here so they know. It's important that people kind of know these things about these humidifiers so we're not throwing things in the trash, filling up landfills. We can make things work if we all share this information. So we greatly appreciate it and we always appreciate your support by liking and subscribing to our videos as well. So getting back to the breakdown guys, let's get started. We're gonna start at the top down and we found some things. We found some things already that are quite fascinating with again, AC Infinity's engineering department on what they're kind of doing to change things up, improve things. And we also found some things that we kind of saw where we were like, eh, you know, I've had better type things. So let's start at the top. The one thing that we saw first of all, when we got the gen one next to the gen two, what we see here, so we're gonna take these tops off just to kind of show you at speed 10 maxed out what we got. All right, do you guys see what I see? Do you see the difference in the output? It looks like the T3 Gen 1 over here looks to be a little bit more of a higher output disc that they were using. Okay, we're, we're, we can visually see that there's a lot more pushing out on this one. We've been using this one for probably a year now. I don't know, a long time. And this is the brand new Gen 2 right out of the box, set up on a Speed 10. And I mean, just looking at it, you can kind of see like, Maybe if we rated this at like 100% output, this would be kind of at like 66%. So maybe they changed it so the refill amounts you would have to do on a Gen 2, it, it, you know, maybe it's, it's to conserve water use where we didn't need this much output on the T3 for like a $50 humidifier. So we're not sure why, but we did notice and we want to put it out there that some of you guys who are still sitting on a Gen 1 who like that extra oomph, keep maintaining it. You know, like it, it really does look like it pushes a lot harder. So that's the first thing we see. Now, starting at the lids, okay? The original Gen 1, you, you can just take this top lid off you can rotate it and simply set it back on. I always like that about the Gen 1s. It gives you the option to fill from the back side or simply move it to the front. There you go, now you can fill from the front side. Well, what we see on the Gen 2 now is the top lid redesign. Listen, you hear that clicky clicky? Okay, so what they did is they put these new plastic tab clips in um i gotta say i'm not a fan of plastic tab clips what i learn is is when you're putting these down on you hear that click well sometimes that click doesn't go as good as we always hope and what we realize is is over time what if those tabs do break off i don't know if they're gonna yet because we just got this but it's like it it holds the the top on now 
I don't know why that was necessary or if people were complaining about the tops coming off. I kind of like that on the Gen 1 myself, but hey, it is what it is. We're in Gen 2 world now. So now no one can fill from the front on a Gen, a Gen 2 on the, on the T3 design. So now that we have to fill from the backside only, we also got to be careful about filling this thing with water because one of the big issues is water running down the backs of these humidifiers. So if you are going to be using a Gen 2, fill it with something that has like a pore spout that's like easy to get in there and not something where you're just cascading water out of a bucket or something that might be, you know, more prone to spilling water all over the outside of the system. Just don't do it. You know, if you want these things to last for a long time and you don't want to wake up one day and it's dead, just be careful how you fill it and you should be just fine. So that's one of the big things on the Gen 2 is, is now we're forced to refill from the backside. So be careful when you do that. I'm gonna take a look at my notes here because on this breakdown, I don't wanna miss anything. It looks like the next thing we're gonna cover actually is the screen filter. Now this in the Gen 2 is a plus. And John's gonna focus in as best he can to show you guys this little screen filter AC Infinity finally dropped in down there. And on the original Gen 1, they never added a screen filter. So when people were experiencing, seeing a completely pour out of water, an empty out of water out of the Gen 1s, what was happening is the float valve would get debris in between it when it would try and close off. Whether it be a stick, hair, perlite, whatever it was, something gets in there it's gonna keep the float valve opened up and the water is just gonna pour right out the base by simply adding a screen filter that's that problem solved now on a gen 2 you no longer have to worry about a, a, an emptying out situation because of float valve being blocked that screen filter is gonna keep anything from getting back in there so yay gen 2 right and then what we got next is the displays the displays you can see are quite different. And when I did take the Gen 2 out of the box and powered it up versus the Gen 1, I do have to say the Gen 2 has a way nicer display. It's a higher resolution, so it's easier to read with smaller print. And AC Infinity kind of had to do that. They kind of had to add a better display because they're packing a lot more details now into the display, including more precise control. So now the Gen 2 has standalone control that's going to not only give you temp and humidity control down to the precise single percentage. Whereas the original Gen 1, you could only adjust that in increments of 5. So when you were dealing with humidity, you could go from 40, 45, 50, and so on, but you couldn't really dial it in, let's say if you wanted 48%. So on the Gen 2, they gave you that 1% precision control built in independently into the Gen 2, plus VPD control built in. That's a, that's a huge thing we were talking about in one of our other videos on the cloud, uh, the Thermoforge heater, where we talked a little bit more about VPD, and you can watch that one if you want to know more. But now, the Gen 2's got it all built in with a nice crispy display a new button panel for easy adjustments, any, any changes you need to make. If you want to run this independently, no problem. And as far as the UIS control goes, running these into the controller 69, controlling them like that, they both kind of run the same game that way. They both have that type of control because they're running through a master controller. So Gen 2's got some new improvements that are pretty good. Um, it definitely does look impressive with the new display. I, I do like that when I'm buying a product, I will say, you know, you get what you pay for and AC Infinity does keep trying to pack improvements into this design. So next thing we're looking down on here is going to be the back ports, okay? We talked about this earlier in a, a, another video we dropped, but one of the big things that we gotta look at now is AC Infinity did know that there was a water problem with people pouring water down the backs of these. And we saw that when they started to include new cables versus the original cables. And there's a thicker 
wider plug, but it has a grommet, a little seal grommet built in. So when you do plug these into the backs of the humidifiers, you're gonna see that they're attempting to make a waterproof seal. They don't want water getting into the backs of these plugs. So if we turn these around, I'm gonna show you. If you're not using any of the back components here, guys, keep the, keep the rubber plugs plugged in. Whether it's the Gen 1 or the Gen 2, what we gotta realize is, is these back ports, we don't want any water getting into any of them. And the other thing, the Gen 2 sensor plug also has a grommet seal built in. So they took some extra measures here, even with the plug, the new plug has a double grommet just to keep the UIS port sealed if you're not using it. So the goal here is, is we don't want water running in the backs of these units regardless. So moving on, moving on, what else do I see? The next thing we got to talk about basically is the fix it part of this video. We went through it pretty quick because I feel like I've been living just an intimate life with these humidifiers. And because we've had such a great response on the last couple videos, and we've talked to so many people and been working with so many people on how to figure out all these issues, I kind of had an epiphany aha moment on the fix it side of things one day when I was 10 minutes away from closing this place down and going home. So we're gonna get to that next. Stay tuned, I'll be right back and we're gonna break down how to bring these things back to life if they're dead. Wow! All right, so we're back for the meat and potatoes part of the Cloud Forger's repair section. How do we get these things to work again? When we have the dead display, the display of death, or I get calls also all the time about, I plug it in and it won't, the channel won't work. It won't read the channel. It's not communicating with the, the 69, this thing. It won't communicate with the controller. And I got to thinking, I'm like, you know, we're dealing with moisture here. I've been around, I've been around a while. I'm 45 and I remember 8-bit Nintendo cartridges where I used to always have to make them work again because kids used to blow on the cartridges to get them to work. You'd plug them in, they'd work for a while, and then boom, flashy blue screen again. Simply put, those copper contacts always used to get spit and moisture drying up on them and corroding them. So I thought about it. We've been seeing the same issue with corrosion on these plugs, and I decided to just do a little test and what we found is is i'll just show you what i did it was short simple easy anyone can do this i've had customers do this already just through email support they fix these things everybody's been happy i'm going to unplug this first rule here let's get power out of the humidifier okay so boom jesus don't do that but anyways we're going to flip this back we're going to pull this out I just want you to look down into that port. Now this is a T3 Gen 1 that I was able to fix. And when I looked in this one, this was actually a returned unit to my store. It was originally gobbled up with green and blue corrosion. And when I looked down into those pins up close, I noticed there was film over the tops of the contacts. And I said, even if this is dry, isn't there a strong chance that there could be a little bit of mineral deposit or enough salts to carry conductivity from one pin to the next? Could be. And if there is a ground or anything that's going on in there where it's not clean connects, we may not get power. So all I did is take a little flathead screwdriver that I was able to fit in here with the power off. And this this flathead has a little bit of like uh, angled like abrasive. So all I did is, is go in there and just simply just go back, back and forth scraping. Just kind of cleaning those tabs just like that. Anything that you can get in there with with a simple abrasive on both sides, the underside like this, scrapey, scrapey, scrapey to remove that and bring those copper contacts, gold leads, whatever the hell they are. We just wanna clean off any residue. And sure enough, 
That's all I did. It took me literally less than 60 seconds. I plugged the unit back in, added water, and voila. It's been working ever since. We've been running it for probably a month now. And ever since I discovered this, I was pretty, I was pretty excited because it gives me the opportunity to get more work done in a day and do less RMAs and tech support on these phone calls I get or people coming into my shop. I look on my store camera and I see them walking in with a T3 and I'm like, oh God, or a T7, which is even funnier to watch someone lug in. But the truth is, it's all the same. It's all the same. It's just the contacts, guys. So when we're dealing with UIS channel connectivity, check your cable ends. Check every contact to see if there's any type of corrosion or debris inhibiting these tiny micro fine pins from making perfect independent contacts because if there is a cross or a ground where one contact is making a connection with the other black screen of death and instead of throwing these things out and filling the landfills let's just make them work again and let's save ac infinity some time i guess there are a main all of these and this is really all that needs to be done to keep even these gen ones running so just keep that in mind and I hope you try this yourself. I had a customer I helped uh, over email who did it on a T7 and we'll throw up a photo that he sent of his port, which is a perfect visual image of what you'll probably see if your humidifier is actually dead, no display. All you gotta do is go in there, clean it up, and we're actually gonna take this customer's emails. Todd was great because when I worked with him, he was open-minded and said, yeah, you know, that might work, and what do I got to lose because I just wanna get this working. And he went full MacGyver mode. He went full MacGyver mode and went through a full cleaning of his humidifier and shared the info back with me. And he said, I didn't have anything to lose. This was great. Everything works now. It's been working for two weeks. And I'm gonna actually add his email info on all the cleaning tips he did step-by-step -step right in the description of this video. So check it out. And a special thanks to Todd too for being so cool to work with and open-minded about how to easily fix this versus demanding a return, an RMA, and so on, so. Oh, by the way, you're welcome. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. We like making them for you and comment, share your comments down below, like and subscribe and hit the bell notification for new video drops we're doing because we are enjoying this and all your kind words mean the world to me. I do read all the comments and try to respond to as many of them as possible. So thank you so much. Have a great day, guys.